What's up guys, welcome back to the iOS dev channel, Max Codes. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at what Swift UI is, and we're gonna be going through all the key points that are here on the documentation. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering, where is the code? I wanna learn how to use this. And I'm actually gonna be showing you how to do this first thing tomorrow morning. So if you're watching this, go ahead and check out the description to see the tutorial link that I'm uploading tomorrow morning. All right, now in this video, we're just going to take a look at what it is and how we're actually gonna be able to use it in the videos I'm gonna be uploading throughout this week. Okay, now SwiftUI was announced today by Apple at Worldwide Developer Conference 2019, also known as WWDC 19 or 2019. All right, so now that I've told you about the SwiftUI tutorial that I'm gonna link in the description, let's go ahead and read a bit on this do developer documentation. You'll see that the first big point is declarative syntax, okay? So SwiftUI uses a declarative syntax so you can simply state what your user interface should do. This makes it extremely simple, right? All you have to do is say, hey, we want this property. We want this property, right? Right here you can see we have image, we have text, we have text. Now the syntax obviously doesn't make a ton of sense initially, but I've used it and I'm gonna show you how to do that tomorrow morning, okay? But the point here is that your code is simpler and easier to read than ever before, right? Now, again, obviously it's not easy to read yet, but it will tomorrow, okay? Now, let's see what they say here. This declarative style even applies to complex concepts like animation. And if you've been subscribed to me for a long time, you already know that I freaking love animations and you already know that I'm gonna be making tons of animations with Swift UI because if th what they're saying here is true, then I'm gonna be all about it. It says with animation this easy, you'll be looking for new ways to make your app come to alive. And I'm already doing that every single day. So I'm pretty stoked about the declarative syntax and animate how that works with animations. Okay, so let's take a look at the design tools. Now, the design tools has more than a few points here, right? So let's go ahead and take a look by first reading the overview. It says Xcode 11 includes intuitive new design tools that make building interfaces with SwiftUI as easy as dragging and dropping. All right, so the first thing I think about this is storyboards, right? And I, I just really dislike storyboards. You probably know that about me if you've been watching my videos for a while or taking my courses, but I'm willing to be a little open about this because SwiftUI seems pretty dope already, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at this. It says, as you work in the design canvas, everything you edit is completely in sync with the code in the adjoining editor. Okay, so that sounds like playgrounds but maybe this is an actual working version of Playgrounds because you all know that Playgrounds really didn't work very well. All right, but basically this kind of reminds me of uh, React, right? If you've done any React or Angular and you use Webpack, you, you know that uh, saving it will kind of automatically refresh in your browser and update on the screen, right? So that seems like that's what this is gonna be able to do. Okay, so drag and drop. Uh, again, I don't really like drag and drop, but mm, we'll see in tomorrow's video how well this works and see if it's like storyboards or if it's something that works better than storyboards. We'll see. All right, dynamic replacement. Now, from what I've read about here and used, it seems that basically it generates code for you based on maybe some of your user interfaces. Not entirely sure what this is saying, but we'll take a look at that in the video tomorrow. Okay, so I'm gonna mark those two. Now previews. You can now create one or many previews of any Swift UI views to get sample data and configure almost anything your users might see. So this is pretty dope because we'll be able to test things really quick, right? We don't have to like put our design together 500 different ways. We can just create previews really easily. And I'll show you how to do that in a video this week. I plan on making videos on each one of these topics, okay? All right, so. Let's see, native on all platforms. This is what I really like, and it's what I thought Swift was when I was first getting into it. When I first got into Swift, I thought, okay, UI stack view or a WK web view, things like that, they're gonna be the same in Mac OS development, right? But that is not the case, right? If you've done any cross-platform development, well, yeah, cross-platform as in Mac OS to iOS. But essentially, Swift UI, allows us to write the same code for Mac applications, iPhone applications, 
uh, iPad applications, watch applications, and TV applications. So that's super dope, and I really look forward to that. So again, that's it for this video. Very quick video on some of the new things in SwiftUI, or all the new things in SwiftUI, and how we might be able to use them in tomorrow's videos and the next videos throughout this week, okay? So I truly look forward to seeing you in that next video. If you're watching this tomorrow, go ahead and check out the description for the code tutorials on SwiftUI. Let's go ahead and learn everything about this. I'll see you in just a second.